children are rolling! Hi everybody! Welcome to my not mukbang. Uh, welcome to tub time. I think this is tub time number three. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I have a new down home magazine. Oh, oh, so cute. And what else do I have? Let's see. I have a glass of Carlo Rossi. What have you guys been up to? So you guys, I was in Costa Rica. You know how when you're having like a good time or whatever and then you come back home and all of a sudden the shit hits the fan? Well, when Darlene got home, her fridge had crapped out. Yeah, so that was like, I think she said it was a $400 bill. And then the day after she told me that that happened, I did this. And you guys, this is a brand new iPhone 10 X or something like that. Yeah, I just bought it. Just bought it before I went to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad I picked up the care, eye care plan or something like that for insurance or something like that when I got my phone. Anyway, you guys, I had not even been home like two days. I didn't download any of my videos onto my computer so that I could do any editing or anything like that and then I ran over my damn phone. So it's been hell, I went to Bell and everything like that and they said, yeah, we'll try to fix your phone. And I'm like, you're gonna try to fix this? You're gonna try to fix this, this. And it's, it's, even, it's even cracked in the back, like it's effed up. Anyway, uh, that's what he said and he did all the paperwork on it because I guess there's a little bit of life still in the phone when you touch the side button or whatever it still lights up and whatever. So anyhow, anyhow um, I now have to uh, fill out a bunch of friggin shit paperwork online and send off a paper that I gotta fill out and all this crap all uh, and uh, Put these sticky things onto the top and my ass keeps sticking to them. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I gotta fill all that shit out. And But meanwhile, okay, so this was two days ago now that I brought my phone to Bell and uh, it's been that long since I've been trying to download all of my videos onto my computer and he keeps saying uh, device something is wrong with the device that's connected to the computer so you guys I'm having hell of a time I'm like uh, it'll let me download like four pictures or one video or like just oh it's just taking forever anyway so I'm, I'm slowly but surely getting through downloading everything because I don't want to give my phone to these guys just in case they end up friggin deleting every damn thing off of my phone and you know, like, I have my phone, uh, what is it, uh, like, backed up or whatever, right, on my computer already, and, uh, but I, ugh. if I lose all my pictures and video without having it saved onto my computer, I am going to cry, I'm going to scream, I'm going to freak, I'm going to lose my mind, uh, because the videos and stuff were just awesome. Anyway, um, there's still a few things that I still need to download. Uh, from prior to the trip. Yeah, so I'm working on all that crap and meanwhile In the meantime and in between time <laughs> Cheers mm. So you guys I was just finishing editing a video with me and my friend Darlene While we were in Costa Rica and I was doing a mukbang with uh, those cup of noodles you guys remember those original like, I don't know, there was Mr. Noodles way back when and Cup of Noodles or whatever. Anyway, so uh, I did a video in Costa Rica and Darlene joined me and stuff too. And we had a bit of wine and it was friggin' awesome. And I am currently trying to upload it to YouTube, but there's another video, maybe two videos that I still have to edit before I put that one up. Why? Well, because I'm kind of trying to follow a timeline and uh, I thought this one might be the easiest one to start with. So that's what I did. I'm getting pretty good at editing. It only took me a couple days. <laughs> I 
which is why I praise myself so high when I don't have to do any editing at all because I am so friggin' happy. I think, did I just do that? Did I just do that to another video? I think I just did. I, it might not be made public yet, but anyway, it's saved and you guys will see it. I'm not sure which one it was. You guys will see that eventually. And anyhow, okay, so we are here today for the Down Home Magazine, okay you guys? Yeah, isn't this sweet? Oh my god. So this beautiful bird. What kind of bird is that anyway? Do you guys know? What kind of bird is it? Uh, it doesn't say, but what kind of bird is it? If you guys could let me know in the comments down below, that would be freaking awesome because to me, I don't know. I don't know. Is it a puffin? <laughs> is it a penguin? What the hell is that thing? Uh, is it a duck? Maybe it's a duck. Kind of has duck feet, the web feet, right? Just probably a duck. Okay, well anyways. Let's get to checking out this magazine, shall we? Oh, and guess what? When I came back home, I went I went to Sobeys and there's another down home magazine. So there's going to be another video coming pretty soon, you guys. Okay, anyway, let's start with the first article that I want to read today. So this one is really interesting, actually. Look at that. Look at that. Growing up, my... I can't read. It's backwards into the camera. Growing up, my generation learned things the hard way, you know without the internet. <laughs> so this is the editor-in-chief. What does that mean anyway, editor-in-chief? Editor-in-chief, what does that mean? Like, you're the editor or you're the chief? How can you be the editor-in-chief? I don't, I don't understand that. Anyway, it's Janice, Janice Stuckless, editor-in-chief. So she says, in going over letters from our older readers as they reminisce about learning with a slate and pencil or chalk and being kept warm by a potbelly stove, I realized how much Newfoundland and Labrador living changed as the 20th century progressed. More importantly, I realize now that enough years have passed since my own school days that I can look at the generation coming up behind me and say, when I went to school, we didn't have, insert any number of conveniences here. Does anyone even use chalkboards in school anymore? I remember in elementary school the teacher would choose prefects for the class and one of their jobs was to... Would those be the teacher's pets? <laughs> I don't know. I was never the teacher's pet. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, and one of their jobs was to bang the erasers outside and wash the chalkboard or blackboard after school. Nowadays there are smart boards that save what's written in an, in an electronic file that can be emailed to students. They don't even have to write down notes off the board, you guys. And do kids still borrow textbooks for the year? Wrapping their covers in brown paper to keep them in good condition for next year's class? With cell phones these days and all their apps, is there even a market for calculators? Do kids still have to memorize the times table? In my day, our instant messages were on paper. Will Smith was a rapper and Pluto was a planet. And the elementary school my siblings went to? It's now a winery. What do you tell your kids and grandkids about your school days? Write to me about it. You won't be graded on it. School's out for us. Thanks for reading. Ha <laughs> ha. You're welcome, Janice. By the way, Janice, I put up a picture of me with the Down Home Magazine in Costa Rica. Maybe it'll show up inside of the book, huh? Someday. Maybe someday. Okay. Let's see. What else can I read? Mmm. Why do we blow? Oh shit, I just realized I do not have my glasses and I'm reading, but mind you now, it's probably easier to read from this distance here. But I will read here because I am drinking wine here. <laughs> okay, let's. Why is that? Expert answers to common life questions. Why do we blush? Picture this. You're at the grocery store happily wheeling along in a daze, not really paying attention to what you're doing or where you're going when you accidentally plow your cart into a pyramid-shaped Pepsi display, sending bottles flying and suds erupting. All of a sudden, your face turns redder than Nan's bottle beats as you look up and see all the other shoppers staring at you. Well, you guys, that just happened to me in Mexico. <laughs> yes, they wanted to take my tripod. My tripod! Bastards. Anyway. While your most embarrassing moment might be a little different, the result is likely the same. To blush is to be human. Even Charles Darwin called it the most peculiar and the most human of all expressions. But how does it happen and why? Blushing is triggered by various positive and negative emotions. For example, surprise, joy, guilt, embarrassment, shame. So perhaps 
Being the unwanted center of attention is the underlying cause. Yes, that's true. Well, uh, Dr. Drummond uh, from Perth, Australia says, when we experience such an emotion, our sympathetic nervous system kicks into high gear. Adrenaline is released, our heart rate spikes, the blood vessels in our face dilate, and blood flow increases, resulting in that telltale facial flush. Blushing spreads to the neck and upper chest in some people, but presumably is most intense in the face because of the dense supply of blood vessels close to the surface that contain beta receptors, which make the vessels dilate when stimulated by adrenaline. While no one knows for sure why blushing evolved, he says, as the psychological mechanism is similar to flushing in the heat and during exercise, presumably, Blushing cools the body down after an intense emotional experience. This might help to dissipate the emotion. Well, very good. It also acts as an emotional barometer of sorts, signaling to others that we feel shame or embarrassment, and that's not entirely a bad thing. A team of Dutch, Dutch researchers found that their subjects viewed more favor, favorably and were more likely to forgive another's embarrassing miss tap if they should spot a blush accepting them at face value so to speak it's an involuntary response and there's not much you can do about it though if it affects your day-to-day -day, psycho psychologists can help people manage the discomfort often associated with blushing and the thoughts that trigger it okay I don't want to keep reading that because there's just too many articles in here you guys not to mention my tub it's freaking hot today Am I blushing? I feel that my chest is red. I'm sweating profusely. There's wetness. Do you see wetness? Yeah. Um, okay, so that's amazing. Wild news from around the world. Oh, that might help. Obtain my hair. High tech harp. If you happen to see a seal around Newfoundland and Labrador with a radio antenna sticking up from behind its head, don't worry, it's not a remote controlled robot. It's just one of 12 harp seals that DFO has tagged in a study to track the behavior of young seals, which includes recording their speed and how they react to climate change. Interesting. Next, the taste of music. <laughs> Swiss researchers took nine wheels of Emmental cheese and subjected each one to either hip hop, Mozart, or classic rock to find out if it changed the cheese's flavor. According to their results, hip hop had the biggest impact on taste and smell. What? Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, next one. Close call. An Australian man had a brush with death when he decided to confront a man armed with a bow in a small town in Nim Nimbin. As the man tried to take a photo, excuse me, of the intruder with his cell phone, the armed man shot an arrow at him. Miraculously, the arrow pierced the man's cell phone, sparing him a deadly wound. Holy balls. Wicked man. Okay, can I'm really hot right now. My hair is growing, you guys. Ah, it's halfway down my back. Well, I'm just kidding. Okay, next. Um, can you take it lying down? How much do you love sleeping in? Well, you might be the perfect fit for a NASA and European Space Agency study on the effects of microgravity on the human body. Volunteers will have to stay horizontal in bed for a whole two months never getting up. That means they'll have to figure out how to eat and yes, use the bathroom while lying down. They'll be paid about $24,800 for their troubles. Applicants must speak German. Well, I guess I'm out. Next, for sale, a town. Holy, what? The entire town of Story, Indiana could be yours if you have US 3.8 million lying around. At the moment, the town has a population of three people and six houses. Founded in 1851, it was recently listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Now you guys, if it's a historic place, does that mean that you would be responsible for fixing all of these historical buildings? Right? Yeah. Okay, uh, next, Morocco Run. A 251 kilometer marathon, De Sables is a brute, De, De Sables? 
is a brutal six day run across the Sahara Desert in Morocco. Oh my God. Considered the toughest foot race in the world, it's a test of stamina in the grueling heat. In, in April this year, 16 year old Jack Davidson from British Columbia became one of the youngest people to ever complete it. Holy cow, way to go kid. Holy crap. Ooh, hubby's home. I think he, um, he picked up a roast chicken with potatoes and gravy. Paul Warford. Do you guys remember? I I told you guys a story, or a little, little, I read a story that Paul Warford wrote at, in my last um, Tub Time episode about living in a closet. Yeah. Okay. When good things happen to me, I'm in such disbelief, I tend to have trouble registering reality. I was invited to perform at Just for Laughs in 2010. Good for you, man. The sun was warm on my cheeks when I spoke to the JFL people on the phone. My girlfriend, at the time, I'm so wet. My girlfriend at the time sat and watched as I spoke to the representatives who gave me the good news. JFL would fly me to Toronto. Hi. <laughs> would fly me to Montreal. What more could I ask for? I hung up the phone and tried to think straight. After a few minutes of my silence, my girlfriend asked, aren't you excited? I thought I was. To be honest, I have never been great at getting excited. When good things happen to me, I'm in such disbelief, I tend to have trouble registering the reality. Recently, I won a big comedy competition, and seconds before I was called to the stage, I was telling my wife, ah, uh, I don't think I won. That's why I have a glass jar on top of my fridge. It once contained marinara sauce, but now I put something else in there. I had my first on-screen speaking role today. I can't tell you what it's for because it's against the rules, but I'm pretty sure it's a movie and it almost didn't happen. Yesterday, while up to my eyeballs in tissues and those halls with the stuff in the center, the casting people called out of the blue saying they needed someone to play a TV salesman in a department store and they needed them the following morning. So was I interested? Would I be available? And if so, what was the size of my neck? It turns out the answer is 14.5 inches. Holy jeez, that's what my neck is. However, I'd, spend, I'd spent the previous two days moping and sneezing and cinched up in quilts. I told them all of this on the phone and I said I was worried I wouldn't be able to give them clean takes because of all the coughing. I said clean takes on purpose, hoping it made me sound like I played, like I played salesman on TV all the time. Of course, St. John's is a small town with a tight-knit film community, so they were probably well aware of just how many clean takes I've had. This local familiarity seems to have worked in my favor though, because the only reason they asked me in the first place was because ugh, I had to help cater a filming. I've done this a couple of times. They reminded me from my time behind the ladle, scooping up dinner and topping up coffee, and based on those memories, they thought I would fit the role. Isn't that neat? They could tell you'd be good just from serving them food and talking to them. You should be proud. My wife says all of this once I've hung up with the casting people. Being proud hadn't occurred to me. Instead, I was panicking about the shoot and how it would go. My cold was quite bad. Would I cough and make things complicated for the cast and crew? My wife reminded me that I'm a great comedic actor and this would be easy for me. Being a great comedic actor hadn't occurred to me either. The shoot went really well. I did cough a lot while waiting to perform between takes, but every time I glanced up, another kind face was standing over me with a throat lozenge telling me I was doing great. Sometimes you just need to hear the little things, even if they're being said by strangers. Why did I mention the marinara jar earlier? Alyssa Cara. I don't know Alyssa Cara personally. I just know she's a young, emerging musician from Canada. I watched a live performance of hers on YouTube around this time last year. Before getting on stage and doing her thing, she did a quick interview. She mentioned how she has always kept a jar since she was a kid and every time an opportunity came her way or something positive happens in her life, she writes the event on a piece of paper and sticks it in the jar. At the end of the year, she reads the contents. Quite an enlightened habit for a 17 year old, wouldn't you say? I started my own jar as soon as Alyssa gave me the idea, maybe you should start one too. Everyone's so busy and exhausted, it can be tough to remember the quick casting calls and pro-offered cough drops. As a born pessimist, I tend to focus on the bad colds rather than the good days, but today was a good day, and now that that day's in the jar, it waits with all the others ready to remind me that it's okay to get a little excited every now and then.
Yeah, so here's Paul Warford. Awesome, good job. I'm so warm, you guys. I don't know how long I can stay in here. Ooh, on Capelin watch. Capelin, I would like to have some Capelin. Anybody wanna send me some Capelin? On Capelin watch, look at this cool picture. Isn't that great? Okay, beginning in late June. Oh wait, this annual event has no set date. It happens fast and doesn't last long. Will you be ready for the Capelin roll? Beginning in late June, especially during the run of Mozzie, foggy and damp weather, folks in the know start scanning the beaches for more than driftwood. They're looking for a dark pool in the incoming tide and a distant flurry of movement in the waves as they, as they sweep in over the pebbly and sandy beaches. A silvery shimmer, a flick of tails and scales, followed by a burst of commotion on the land wash. Then the call is heard around the community. The Capelin are rolling! <laughs> it's really cool actually when you see the waves come. The waves are full of Capelin and it's so dark. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Here's the Capelin. They're actually pretty small. So usually what happens is they dry the Capelin and then they use it later on. Actually, there's a picture right there of it being dried. Yeah. Oh. So Capelin, it lives in the deep ocean most of its life from Greenland to Alaska, Japan to Atlantic Canada. They only come ashore to spawn. That is what all their fuss is about when the Capelin roll. The females come ashore to lay their eggs where the males fertilize them. These tiny smelt like fish have have silver and green backs and silvery white bellies. During spawning season, the males' heads and backs appear dark, darker, excuse me, and their fins larger than the females, and the males gain a row of longer scales on their sides called spawning ridges. After laying their eggs, the females head back out to the, to the sea to spawn somewhere else again someday. The males hang around in the shallower water to spawn more than once, and they die when the spawning season's over. <sighs> Essentially, they sacrifice themselves for the survival of their species. Capelin feed on plankton and small crustaceans. More importantly, they are the food source for much higher ups in the food chain, from cod to squid, seals, and whales. In fact, when the capelin are rolling ashore, there are often whales spotted in those bays. They've chased the schools on the hunt for a tasty meal. Seabirds also fill the sky and put off quite the high diving show when the capelin are in. Also, flocking the beach, beaches in search of a meal are the locals. Whenever the Capelin roll, doesn't matter if it's under a br brilliant sun or a shimmering moon, the crowds come with their cat cast nets, dip nets, and buckets. It's an all-age event, all-ages event, and the delighted squeals and shouts could be from a toddler or a senior in hip rubbers or sandals, all equally excited to grasp the slippery flapping fish by the dozens. Some freshly caught Capelin will be cooked up over a fire right there on the beach. Others will be carefully salted and dried at home and later fried up with scrunchions, barbecued, <laughs> barbecued or frozen for a midwinter treat. Some like them cleaned with heads removed like a trout or salmon and others scarf them down whole. Here's a picture of a young fellow with his hip waders. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? What a little cutie. Haha. <sighs> <laughs> Ooh, there's a recipe for crispy deep fried capelin. You guys, I'm not joking when I say, please send capelin. <laughs> please, come on, come on. You guys, look at this sweater. You see this sweater right here? I ordered it, I have it, it's now mine. Yes, it is. It is. There's some good recipes in here too, you guys. Holy crap. Ooh, Ooh. KFC. KFC, you guys. Is this the secret recipe of 11 herbs and spices? A Chicago Tribune reporter thought he had cracked the code on KFC's famously guarded chicken breading recipe. After a 2016 interview with a Sanders family member revealed an old handwritten recipe featuring 11 herbs and spices. The company wouldn't confirm the authenticity of the recipe, but if you would like to try it, here it is. If you guys would like that recipe, let me know, let me know. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try it. Yes, I am. Maybe I'll have to do a video on that. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, phew. oh my God, I'm so hot. I'm, I feel like I'm getting overheated. And I haven't even washed my hair yet. <laughs> Did 
but I already do everything to her. I did. You guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Me and my down home magazine, Tub Time. I think this is number three, you guys. Cheers. Thank you for watching. And by the way, I'm Lisa, Chef Wannabe. And um, if you guys are interested in seeing any more videos, I have all kinds of weird videos, including this one. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. If you don't have an account, please sign up for an account. It's free. All you need is an email and a password. But make sure that you sign up for YouTube so you can watch my videos, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you do get informed when I do post a new video. Please like, share, comment if you want. Good, bad, ugly, I don't care. Take care, you guys, and see you later. Be good. Bye. Ooh.